Okay, next up is Maribel Rivera. Uh, hello, Maribel. Hey, Bill. Uh, I want to mention that Maribel is going to speak uh, for 15 minutes or so, and then we're going to go right into our session at 1 o'clock, which is basically how to do review properly. So don't go away. We're not going to take a break be between Maribel's presentation and the 1 o'clock show. And I want to milk welcome Maribel. Thank you for coming. And I will also say that along with George and I, Maribel has been one of the partners that have helped make the Discovery Conference what it is over the past eight years. Thank you very much, Maribel. Uh, she's been great guidance for us and also great guidance in my career uh, in terms of where we're going. And tell us how to improve our brands. Okay, Maribel? You're welcome. Thank you, Bill. Um, and I just want to say I am wearing my UF scarf today as well. So uh, twinning with Judge Barksdale. Um, and I'm sorry that we can't all be together, but looking forward to many of you uh, returning to campus next year or joining us on campus next year. So I'm here today to talk to you a bit about um, how to build your or continue to build your e-discovery brand, no matter what your role is. A strong brand stands out in the crowd. It gains increased awareness, better client experience, and of course, more business as a result. But branding isn't just for companies, it's for every professional. Everyone has their own story to tell and goals, skills, and expertise to share. Uh, in today's increasingly digital world, a personal brand is no longer a maybe, it's a must have. And that's why I'm here today. So who am I? In addition to being part of the event strategy and marketing for several years on this conference, as Bill mentioned, I'm the Senior Director of Community Relations at the Association of Certified E-Discovery Specialists, also known as ASADS. I am also an independent marketing consultant and event strategist behind um, events like today, um, as well as uh, InfoGov World, which is coming up, the MER conference and other things. I lead the Inclusion, Diversity, Equality, Awareness and Action Committee for ASEDS. I am the inaugural recipient of the 2020 Relativity Innovation Inclusion Breakthrough Award. I'm a board member of the anti-human trafficking nonprofit organization, Life Preservers Project, with Michael Quartararo, who you'll hear from later on this afternoon, as well as Jesse Torres. Um, I also sit on the board of the Female Collaborative. I'm a member of ARMA and Women in E-Discovery, as well as involved in the MER. There's so much more that I could share about who I am and what I do. Um, but the takeaway here is that all of these things have helped me to build a strong brand. That's how I've helped to move my career forward. And I'm going to share with you today how you can do the same. So you start with a couple of steps. There's eight important steps, and then the ninth one is just to regularly reevaluate. But you have to figure out who you are. What areas do you excel in? What things motivate you? What characteristics are you continuously complimented on? Take those things and you have to work on those to build that brand. Figure out your why. What two or three things drive your passion? Um, so for example, as you may have noticed, I love to give back. I'm a champion for diversity, inclusion, and equality, as well as belonging. I love to meet people and introduce them to other people they should know or need to know. Um, so those are the ways that I know that I'm passionate. Those are my whys. Um, be a resource. What I mean is to be a source of help or supply for your peer clients, uh, external clients and others in the community. Show them that you enhance their capabilities to understand, anticipate, and solve problems and build their business. They're going to appreciate that, and they're going to come back to you time and time again as a resource. Number four, be authentic. Act in ways that genuinely show how you feel. And really listen to what other people are saying. Listen and take that back and provide them with honest feedback. A lot of my clients, a lot of my peers will share with you that I'm always honest and upfront with them. Um, I listen whenever they need me. And that's me just being my authentic self. Number five, have consistent messaging. For example, I'm always positive and upbeat across any platform. I keep that messaging the same. My network can confirm that I'm always about good energy and positive vibes. Um, you know, there's times where over the last year, Bill and I may have conversations stressing about the conference. And I'm always like, it's going to be okay, Bill. It's all going to work out. Um, and I'm sure he'll confirm that later on. 
Be a thought leader. So share your expertise and thoughts with the world. Don't say what everyone wants to hear or is, is everything everyone is saying. Um, use your experience, whether successful or not, to help others grow. So you need to show them that even though you fail, you can actually take those and show them how you use that to then succeed. It's a really important part of building your brand. Uh, never stop learning. So I have a certificate in personal branding, Google Analytics, digital marketing, social media platforms. I have a certificate in introductory AI. I have a mini MBA in financial competence from ACEDS. I'm currently working on my e-discovery uh, executive certificate from ACEDS. And then for 30 minutes every morning, I read blogs such as e-discovery today by Doug Austin, who you just heard from, e-discovery assistant, um, which is curated by a number of people from the e-discovery assistant team, including Kelly Twigger, uh, ACEDS, which has great blogs, including the Kangaroo Court and several others. Uh, Jared Casalia is actually one of our uh, newest bloggers returning back to the ACEDS team, the EDRM, Complice Dis Discovery, and many, many others. I recommend that you go in and create just a news feed for yourself every morning. Create a Google alert. Do something just to help you keep up to date with what's going on and what people are writing about. And then I would say the la uh, two of the last things. Be proactive. Try to have a solution to a problem before being asked. So if you see that something might bring up some type of challenge or situation, always have an answer for that. Try and figure it out or figure out who you have to go to to get the answer for. And then lastly, assess yourself regularly. So go back through the first eight steps on a regular basis. It could be on a monthly or quarterly basis, but you need to do it on a regular basis. Um, take a few hours away from work, family, friends, and really everything else, and sit down and really think of all the things that I just laid out, those first eight, and consider what do you need to do to continue with your growth, your goals, and your performance? Where can you improve? And that's some of the things that you'll do to help build a stronger brand. Now, you can't build a brand um, without some tools. So in addition to these things that you'll be doing, one of the other things is using LinkedIn uh, or social media platforms in general. Many people want to use every single platform uh, for me, I really tell a lot of people that I mentor, choose a platform, don't choose them all. Uh, really choose a platform and dedicate yourself. Uh, it's way too much work to kind of manage 50 million platforms. So really think about what, where you need to be and who your target audience is. So for business professionals, like all of those that are here today, uh, LinkedIn rules the roost. If you want to expand to others, just go back to how you want to build your platform and brand and determine which, which platforms, which tools are going to help you do that. So you can't build a brand with tools, um, but there's some other things that you, uh, you, you need to do just to improve it. Um, so you need to work on your LinkedIn and make sure that when people go there, they can actually kind of take information away from what you're including in your LinkedIn. Many of you may not have a good LinkedIn profile. You may not have your summaries filled out. There's a lot of information missing. So I'm going to just walk you through some of those things that you need to do also because you want people to know who you are and what your brand is about. And if your LinkedIn does not have that information, it's not going to be valuable. So uh, I'll give you a great example. Um, I've had several career coaches uh, and uh, recruiters come over to me and tell me that I've got a really great LinkedIn. I put a lot of pride into it. I dedicate a lot of time into working on it. Um, and so you'll see some of the things that I work on are making my headline more than just a job title. Really think about what that is. Turn your summary into a story of who you are. List your relevant skills. Ask for recommendations and give them. Spread some love with lots of endorsements of other people's skills. Share your passion for learning and showcase for every role um, with different articles, videos, podcasts. So if you were to go to my LinkedIn today, you would probably see I have my Relativity Fest uh, accept acceptance award. I have a recent interview that I did with Tom O'Connor and Rocky Messing. 
um, which is on YouTube. I have uh, several other things up there that you can just look at and pay attention, but I'm really showcasing who I am and the things that I do, the things that I'm passionate about, the people I follow. Um, I also post a lot about many of the nonprofit work, uh, the mentoring and coaching I do, working with uh, Coalition for the Homeless and speaking there. So you, when you follow me, you'll start to see all of those things and what I, what I have done to build my brand. So I will leave you with a few takeaways. Um, and that is, become an expert at what you do. Learning from successes and failures, uh, those are always going to be key. You need to understand that more than anything. Be kind to everyone, which kind of goes back to what um, Craig was saying earlier. Uh, it matters most for career growth and as well as authenticity, right? As long as you're authentic, but you can be kind at the same time. So take those two things hand in hand. Be other centered. One of the best ways to advance ourselves is to advance others. So again, I go back to you. I've built a network for myself. My network knows anytime they need me, I am available. If they need to talk to me about a, a job opportunity, if they need to talk to me about a problem, if they need advice on possible vendors to reach out to, I'm one of the first people many in my network go to. So they know that I'm there, I'm other centered for them. I'm always trying to give back to them and connect them to the things that will help advance their careers. And then some, just some homework for you. Do your initial, initial assessment to set your goals today. So even after the conference, take some time this weekend and really think about if you're trying to build a brand, what you wanna to do to build that brand. Um, follow the steps that I provided. We'll put that in the resources so that you can go back and look at it. And then uh, connect with me and the other speakers. On LinkedIn, we have uh, an event um, which you could go to for the conference. In addition to that, I invite you to just reach out to all of the speakers, share with them, and don't just send a, a regular uh, LinkedIn connection request. Actually put in there what you received today uh, from them, from one of their sessions, right? What did you take away? And share that with them. Share why you should be connecting with them and what you wanna learn from them or what they can learn from you. I think those are valuable tidbits for you to take away and, and give back to them. And so I'm really done. It's really short and sweet, but thank you all for um, letting me share a little bit about how to build your brand. If you're interested in learning a little bit more or wanna talk more about how to build your brand, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, and I'll also share my uh, personal, e my business email in the chat on the LinkedIn group. All right, thank you very much, Maribel. Really, really appreciate it. And again, uh, everything you said, you kind of done working with us here at the eDiscovery Conference, uh, your creative inspiration, your efforts to make me look good, all that's very, very, very much appreciated. It's very easy, Bill. It's very easy to make you look good. <laughs> thank you very much. And, you're very uh, welcome. And you're always your very authentic self, so that works. Oh, well, thanks so much. Uh, it's a moment for me to do a little pontificating because we've been listening uh, this morning about, um, you know, a case law, the judge's panel, a competence, um, how to use search properly. And we've had this afternoon uh, a little bit on the industry. And for me, this is a very important industry. You know, we basically have an e-discovery has become the center of the litigation process. We have the trust of, of the population uh, in our hands. They have to believe in the legitimacy and, and use your word, Maribel, authenticity of the litigation process. We have to demonstrate to them, one, that we get the right results in litigation, that, um, that the litigation process is fair and also that it's efficient. So we're right in the cusp of that and we have a terribly important social mission. And this conference is dedicated to kind of bringing that social mission to the forefront and helping us uh, manage it and help people to build confidence in, uh, in the litigation process, which is why also this year, I want to let everybody hang on to the end because we've got a great social justice panel. Uh, you know, Maribel, you talked a little bit about uh, your, uh, your, your commitments to, to various movements that are really happening now. We live in a world that's changing, that's very exciting. Good things are happening. And I think eDiscovery is doing a lot of good things in that realm, but uh, we don't know about it. And we're going to learn about that in the social justice panel. 
uh, and about various projects that uh, e-discovery professionals are doing and how we all can get involved in doing that more. How can I get my students involved in doing charitable pro bono work and, 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 and opening up the litigation process? How can we use data um, that makes it more accessible and not just e-discovery for the, the, the high and uh, level cases? So this is all happening. That's why this conference is so exciting, why e-discovery is so exciting, and why you're so exciting, Maribel. Thank you. So thank you. No, I'm I'm extremely excited that we added the social justice panel and I've been on some of those panel preps and I can't wait for Mary to um, kick that one off with the great group that we have. It's uh, really exciting to see what all of these uh, individuals and legal and other people as we started mentioning that we were doing the social justice panel. So many people came forward with, oh, we, you know, I'm, I'm doing some things around social justice or I'm doing things around, you know, helping the homeless or I'm doing things around diversity. So it was so interesting to hear from various new uh, people just all the different things that they are doing. And if we can take a lot of that uh, e-discovery knowledge and legal technology knowledge and put it back into the world, I think uh, we're making a huge difference. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Maribel. You're welcome, Bill.